This is an appeal, firstly to the Burmese military, to release my mother and all political prisoners, and to commit to a ceasefire whilst opening negotiations to hand power back to the democratically elected government. Since my mother's arrest and subsequent internment, I have not been granted any contact with her and have not been informed about her whereabouts or the conditions under which she is being kept. Any requests I have made, whether via the British Foreign Office or directly to the Burmese Embassy in London, have been met with no response whatsoever. Her arrest was completely illegal and all charges are fraudulent. During the trial, she was denied appropriate consultation with her lawyers and denied the rights to an impartial tribunal. Her trials violate the most fundamental rules governing any legal procedure. Unfortunately, this story is common to so many in Burma today. Since the military coup, 22,531 people have been arrested, of which 610 are children and 156 have been sentenced to death. Some of those death sentences have already been carried out, rightly horrifying the world. In 2022, one in four acts of global oppression waged on a country's own people was committed by the military junta in Burma. Following the dreadful pattern of so many years of military violence waged against the ethnic peoples of Burma at such great cost to innocent lives. At present, it is estimated that 17.6 million people, which equates to a third of the population, are in need of life-saving humanitarian aid, protection and support. Of those 17.6 million, 5 million are children and there are at least 1.7 million displaced people, whilst 48 million are living at or below the poverty line. In reality, these figures are likely to be much higher. In light of these very basic facts, I appeal also to all governments to start applying meaningful pressure on the military junta to stop the brutal and inhuman treatment of its own people. In particular, I would ask the British government, who with many other countries regard Burma as a pariah state, to withdraw all diplomats and citizens and enter into an open dialogue with the NUG. If regional stability is of any importance to the members of ASEAN and they want a neighbour they are able to freely trade with, then I hope they see the sense of a democratically elected government in Burma. It is disappointing, to say the least, that countries such as Japan and India which is supposed to be the largest democracy in the world, would have anything to do with the junta. The fact that they are supporting them saddens me greatly for a number of reasons, not least of which is that I lived in both Japan and India when I was a child, and I have fond memories of those times. It is of no surprise to me, but a great comfort, that the position of these governments does not reflect that of the people. Of course, it also saddens me greatly that there are Israeli arms companies willing to do business with the junta. Anybody supporting the junta must also be aware that they are also indirectly supporting Russia. It is my hope that people around the world are aware that my mother is, as yet, the only person since my grandfather to make any real advances in uniting the many factions in what is a very delicate and convoluted situation. Furthermore, the military should realise that the first step towards achieving a stable and peaceful country is to release my mother. Clearly, there are many bridges to be crossed before Burma can advance and become a functioning part of the global community. Not least the historic rift between Burmans and other ethnicities. Even when a democratic government has been restored, there will be a long road to mend the hurts caused 
through discrimination and prejudice. Burma must find a peace that enables all to be included with justice and fairness. There is increasing evidence that we can all work together, as evidenced on a daily basis with displaced people from different ethnicities helping each other in whatever ways they can all the time. Both inside and outside Burma, there are people from all walks of life who are doing so much to try and help. It is also clear that the military will never win this war. The youth of Burma will never accept having their freedom taken away from them. And those of us who have lived with this fight for decades are not going to let all the hard-won advances go to waste. I hope that by this time next year, I will be able to wish my mother a happy birthday in person. It is not the first time I have voiced such a hope, and for now I can only hope that she knows my thoughts are with her. Happy birthday, Mimi.